Hello and welcome to another player build. My name is Eran and this is my spiel. At the time of its debut, the Hexblade was considered, and probably still is, the most useful dip into for a martial or charisma based character. So I thought to myself that after the padlock, a combination paladin Hexblade that relies almost entirely on charisma, what other martial class can we combine with the Hexblade with charisma as a primary or secondary ability? The answer is the swashbuckler. Every rogue runs on dexterity, but while an inquisitive and arcane trickster might require intelligence secondary, the swashbuckler relies highly on charisma even for their combat ability. So allow me to present the swashblade. Note, this build is entirely AL legal. Take it to your local Adventurers League game and have fun. It follows the rules to the letter. Honestly, the build relies mostly on Hexblade as the biggest bang for your Swashbuckler comes early, so my default is Swashbuckler 5, Hexblade 15. But you can go more Swashbuckler for more martial prowess. Don't bother to go more than Swashbuckler 8 though. The Swashbuckler's 9th level ability isn't great, the one at 13 is very situational, and the one at 17th is very limited. We start off by picking Half-Elf. If you're playing a class that relies on Charisma, you're usually better off picking Half-Elf. Because of that plus 2 Charisma and plus 1 to 2 other abilities. For your proficiencies, pick Perception and Performance. Or you can go with Intimidation if that's your thing. But I didn't think about this character in that way. Pick whatever language you think will fit in your campaign. Because you get bonuses to 3 abilities, if you use Point Buy, go with 8, 15, 15, 8, 8, 15. And put those bonus ones into Dexterity and Constitution. Don't worry about that odd charisma score, we'll fix that soon enough. If you roll for stats, make your highest charisma, then dexterity and constitution. If you have more to spare, go with wisdom, intelligence, and strength last. Don't worry if your charisma is an odd number. For the background, I recommend the always useful Urban Bounty Hunter. Your dexterity will also be very high eventually. Choose deception and insight because you're a smarmy kind of face who manipulates everyone. For game set and instrument, pick whatever you like. But, inspired by swashbucklers of lore, or fjords from Critical Role if you want, I went with a piratey theme, so dice set and a healthy gurdy. We're going to go rogue first for the better martial proficiencies and equipment. Go for acrobatics, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. No point in going for intelligence skills. For expertise, I picked insight and perception to shore up those weaker skills, but you can go with sleight of hand and stealth if you want to be sneakier. For your equipment, pick two short swords. It's great for starting rogue to fight with two weapons. You'll get a rapier and a bow later on, and you'll probably switch to it because you can only have one packed weapon. Take leather armor and two daggers and you got thieves tools automatically as well as common clothes and 20 GP. As for the pack, pick what's good for the campaign. Explorer for mostly outdoors, Dungeoneer if you're going to be crawling a lot, or Burglar if you're going to be a bunch of assholes. At this point, your sneak attack is a 1d6. Using two short swords, your average damage, considering every attack hits and does average damage, per round is 3, plus 3.5, plus 3.5, plus 3.5, equals 13.5, sustained. Your next level will be in Warlock, Hexblade. This is where you turn from a cute little rogue into an extraordinary damage dealer, as much as you can at level 2. You can now attack with Charisma and it's your primary stat. Hexblade's curse is cool, but save it for the bosses. Hex Warrior allows you to use anything a fighter uses except heavy armor. Pick Eldritch Blast, the best ranged option in the game, and Booming blade because it's good now and will be excellent later and you're skag based if you play AL. Armor of Agathis is a great defensive option for when you get in close and Hex is just great overall. With Hex your average damage per round increases by 3.5 to 17, sustained for an hour. First we go rogue to get the best of the swashbuckler early. At rogue 2 you get cunning action and that's it. Still good and get comfortable using hide. You want to fish for those crits. At Rogue 3, you get the three swashbuckler signature abilities. You add charisma to initiative, you can sneak attack as long as you're dueling, and you only need to attack someone to prevent attacks of opportunity from them, which is the good third of the mobile feat. Your sneak attack is now 2d6, upping your average damage per round to 20.5. Sustained. At Rogue 4, you take Elven Accuracy, bumping your charisma to 18. You only use charisma for attack now. You can switch to a rapier because Booming Blade is even more useful. With it, your average damage is 4, plus 4.5, plus 4.5, plus 7 plus 3.5 equals 23.5 instead of 21.5 two weapon fighting with two short swords and your AC will thank you for the shield you can wield. With advantage your crit chance increases from just under 10% to just over 14%. Next we go Warlock almost all the way, starting at Warlock 2. For spells, pick shield, always good for 
boosts the survivability if you're caught off guard. For invocations, take Mask of Many Faces. You should be the face and this will help greatly. Then take Fiendish Vigor. It's a nice survivability boost which will replace next level. With Warlock 3, the Hex Warrior gets its first big boost with the Pact of the Blade. You can ditch all your non-magical weapons now as you can conjure what you want as an action. Like a rapier. Lose Fiendish Vigor for improved Pact Weapon. Your weapon is now plus one and can be a ranged weapon though you wouldn't need one with Eldritch Blast. For your new spell, pick Invisibility. You want those advantages. Your average damage increased by 1 again to 24.5. Sustained. For Warlock 4, we upgrade Charisma to Max. For your next cantrip, take Mage Hand. It's just always useful. For a new spell, I suggest... Suggestion! It's useful in and out of combat to get people to do what you want. Your average damage increases by 1 again to 25.5. At Warlock 5, drop Mask of Many Faces because we get access to two important Hexplate features. Take Thirsting Blade for the extra attack, bumping your average damage to 30. Then add Eldritch Smite, which can give you an average damage boost of 18, plus 30 is 48. Twice per short rest and knock most creatures prone. For an additional spell, take Fly to reach those hard to reach places and still run circles around your enemies even though they're in the air. This is a good time to take up Rogue 5. This upgrades your sneak attack to 3d6 and your average damage to 33.5. You also get Uncanny Dodge that helps you stay up if you're caught deep in melee combat. This is about as far into Rogue I think you should go, but your mileage may vary. With Warlock 6, you are generally level 11, so your Booming Blade upgrades again, bumping your average damage to 38. You also get a Cursed Spectre or a Cursed Spectre, depending on who you ask. It's a nice friend to have along in combat, its average damage is 10.5, but it hits a lot worse than you. You can use it to scare people. For spells, go with Blink. Best defense is Don't Be There. Plus, with proper tactical use, you can get up behind enemies. At Warlock 7, your spell slots are 4th level, so your boost increases to 22.5 plus your 38, that's 60.5. Take the Relentless Hex Invocation. This will allow you to jump up to enemies, attack them, and run away. Or, if your DM allows, to set up cool sneak up situations for advantage. For the new spell, take Shadow of Moil. It's as useful as darkness, except there is no darkness to bug your friends, and it's reaction damage if you end up getting hit. Now we're at Warlock 8. As your most important stats are at the highest you really need them, you can start waving around feats. I started with Medium Armor Master, so we can use a half plate, which can, with a shield, give you AC 20 with nothing magical going on, and you also get to ignore its stealth disadvantage. Your new spell should be Sickening Radiance. It's a great area denial and caging spell, and if you can keep on begging the exhaustion, it's a killer. Also, very useful for a quick torture session, if you're into that. At Warlock 9, your spell slots are now 5th level. Your boost damage increases to 27, plus your 38, that's 65. Now is a great time to get Mask of Many Faces back, because it's just so much fun. For the new spell, I recommend Cone of Call, because that thing can clear a room if aimed carefully. With Warlock 10, you get Armor of Hexes, which basically means you are much more resistant to those you curse with your Hexblade curse, incentivizing you to take on the big bosses or by your lonesome. Your next cantrip is also more of a stylistic choice. I went with Minor Illusion for the general utility. To Warlock 11, I recommend you take Scrying. Why? Because you can. How about snooping on every villain you've met every short rest? Does that sound like fun? I think so. For Mystic Arcanium, I picked Mass Suggestion. Because what's better than making one person do what you want? Making a whole group of people do what you want. When you hit Warlock 12, you hit the Coveted, level 17. Your Booming Blade upgrades again, bumping your average damage to 42.5. That's 69.5 with the boost. You also get access to Life Drinker, giving you a nice plus 5 damage boost, bumping your average damage to 47.5. That's 74.5 with the boost. And for this ASI, I went with plus 2 con for some survivability. Dex is also good mostly for initiative and skills. You can also take a feat like Resilient to show up saves or something like Great Weapons Master and switch over to a Greatsword. At Warlock 13, take your next Mystic Arcanum. I decided to go with Crown of Stars. For damage output, it's like Minute Meteorites on steroids. With this up, your average damage per round goes up by 26, but you drop the Hex. Minus 3.5, so 22.5, plus your 47.5 from earlier, that's 70, sustained for 7 turns. For the next spell, I picked Dispel Magic. If you haven't taken it yet, it can be invaluable at this level when you're going to be running into spellcasters often. At Warlock 14, you get what truly makes the Hexblade's curse a force to be reckoned with. The ability to just keep using it until it times out, giving you the proficiency bonus to damage for a whole minute, theoretically bumping your average damage to 52.5. Warlock 15 is the last level in the build, and it's a big one. First of all, new invocations. Shroud of Shadow, or by its other name, Invisibility for days! You want advantage? You got it! You can now drop invisibility and take things like Dream. 
for cool roleplay options and long range communication, and major image, the ultimate illusion. Next, 8th level Mystic Arcanum, I really like Demiplane because of storage, but Maddening Darkness is a very powerful combat spell adding 36 average damage for a little while. Also, Feeble Mind is just a horrible thing to do to people. And that's it, that's how I would build a Swashblade. Feel free to comment down below and tell me your modifications. What would you do differently? Would you take more Rogue or less? What different spells or feats would you take? And if you have any suggestions for other builds you'd like to see, if there's something else you want to see on the channel, let me know. I'll read all the comments. Thank you for watching, see you next time, stay good, have fun.